Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies. My name is John and this is going to be what movies I've watched in the month of June 2021. Not June 2020, like I said on my last video about what movies I picked up in the month. Okay, that being said, uh, I've watched quite a few movies here uh, on this month, uh, more than I did on last month. And uh, also I've got my top three recommendations at the end of this uh, video. I'll go through the ones that I've watched obviously and then I'll tell you what my estimations would be the top three of the ones I've watched this uh, this month with obviously my top res recommendation for you if you would like to pick one up or you would like to see the movie okay so the first one I watched was Cabin in the Woods now when I watched this on release I remember getting it being really excited to watch it and thinking it was the biggest load of rubbish I'd ever seen in my life but since then I've heard a lot of people talking about it and I thought well I'm gonna get let it I'm going to give it another crack of the whip. It's only £2 from um, from CX, so I thought, why not? If it's any good, I might upgrade it to 4K. Maybe not, but I put it on, and to be honest, it was really good. I had a good time with it. Uh, I didn't kind of get the way that it, it broke every sort of wall, the fourth wall, the fifth wall, the ninth wall in, in movies. I didn't expect what I was seeing when I originally saw it, but now... I couldn't remember anything about it actually, but I did think it was really quite a clever film. It was a, a movie that did a lot of things that movies don't usually do in horror films especially. So for that reason I thought it was actually pretty good and I did get it this time round. And also I think I will, if I find the, the 4K cheap enough and it's a, it's a suitable upgrade, I will upgrade it to 4K. Who'd have thought it? Because I remember thinking at the time it was one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. It just shows you what fresh perspectives can do. Next up, we watched from the Star Wars box set, we watch Revenge of the Sith. Now, I'm doing a ranking, as you know, of the Star Wars films. We've got quite quite far into this uh, franchise, a lot further than we usually get. And uh, I'll tell you more about what I think of that film in general uh, when I rank it. But I, had a, I have great times with all the Star Wars films to a certain extent, if I'm honest. Uh, this is the first time I really sort of took really that much notice of the, the Blu-ray in this box set. And I do think the Blu-ray was quite good. Uh, would I upgrade it to 4K? Probably not. I think that the prequels are they're all right. I don't have anything against them, but I don't know if they would be sort of 4K worthy as the sort of middle lot, the, the original Star Wars would be. But we had a decent time with it, I must admit, and it's part of the ranking that I'm going to do. But I'll talk all about more what I think about those uh, movies on my ranking video, which will come up you know, quite soon in the next month or two. So next we watched Solo. Now I've got to admit that I was thinking if uh, I've got this on Blu-ray and I thought if this was any good um, picture wise, because I never watched it before, I watched it at the cinema and enjoyed it. So I thought I would uh, have a look at it, and if it was good enough, I would uh, get it on 4K. But I've got to admit, um, I think the first half of the movie on Blu-ray looked very um, like grimy and, and sort of grubby. It didn't come across like a, like a decent quality print. Now I'm interested to know if the 4K is, is with it having HDR, would it make the first half of the film more pleasant to look at? Because to be honest, it was murky, I found, and it did sort of uh, spoil my enjoyment of the first half of the film, which I was quite surprised at because I can't remember that in the cinema. So the Blu-ray on this one was a bit of a letdown, but more about what I thought of the film when I do the ranking. So next up, we're in the right Star Wars kick. Uh, at this at this point, we went to Rogue One. So watching these all in, in series, this would have been after Revenge of the Sith came solo, then Rogue One. Now this one, I've got to admit, the picture quality here is absolutely is brilliant. I knew it would be actually. I, I think this is probably one of the ones that will probably look the best on 4K, as it's a new one, but it's not uh, it's not really CGI heavy, as uh, some of the prequels are. And we had a good time with it. Obviously, I think one of my favourite characters in here is uh, Donnie Yen, who plays the blind, like sort of lightsaber swordsman Jedi person. And uh, I have liked this where you went to see that there's a picture. I'm sure. We did like it more about what I think I'm going to say this over and over again more about what I think about it uh, on my ranking video so funny enough the next one wasn't a Star Wars film it was this one that we've been searching for on blu-ray for a while you could get it in the pound shop but you when you want it you can't find it so we'll settle for the the DVD uh, I've, wa I've watched it I'm glad I've watched it and uh, I don't know if I'll upgrade it 
past this, it, it's all right. It, I don't know if it's a film I'd watch over and over again. If I saw it cheap on Blu-ray, I'd probably get it, but it is Contagion. Now, as everybody in the whole world is now in the middle of this, this, uh, this movie, I would urge anyone who hasn't seen it, if you can find a copy, do watch it uh, because it's spooky how close it is to the actual truth. Well, I'm saying the truth, what we think to be the truth at this point. When it talks about things like R numbers and infection rates and um, vaccines and cures, all that thing, and transmission and how they get how easy it is to transmit things from one person to another, with you have one like patient zero, and you you wouldn't really understand that at the time you're making things a bit far fetched. But when you watch it, you think, wow, that's that's we hear about that in the news all the time. It's as if this person, whoever wrote it, uh, has literally had a time machine and predicted what was going to happen in the future. It's quite uh, bizarre. It's a, it's a decent film, actually. Um, it's very watchable. But I think for the whole um, part of it, what happens in it to what's happening now, it's so funny to look at it. Um, and I'm glad, actually, I'm glad I watched, I'm glad I didn't watch it beforehand. I'm glad I watched it now knowing what we've known in this past year and a bit about the whole virus this is quite a um just an amazingly interesting movie i do highly recommend it uh it's worth well worth a watch and i think everybody in the whole world will obviously identify strongly with this this movie and let's hope we can put it because they do it does resolve itself at the end and let's hope our current situation is resolving itself as well so next up getting back to star wars is Star Wars. So this is for me a classic. Obviously, it's a classic. This the whole three of the uh, original Star Wars run is just they're amazing. And uh, I hadn't watched this for such a long time actually. Uh, first time obviously watching it in 4K. I thought the 4K quality was really good actually. I know it's got them added little bits of um, stuff in from Lucas how he tinkered around with it. And he's changed little bits and sounds and cut bits out. I know that's a thing, and I'm I'm alright with that. It it is what it is. Um, it doesn't really take away too much uh, from the movie. The only thing that is the worst ever, probably special effect in any history of anything, is when Han Solo steps over, uh, what's he called? Jabba the Hutt's like, tail and does this whole movement. It's just absolute trash. Why they couldn't just cut that scene out? It's, it's, put, it's totally useless anyway, but never mind. Um, so yes, so thoughts on this, like I say on the ranking video, but uh, we had a great time with it as we knew we would, and it was just so amazing how long ago we hadn't watched Star Wars. But the picture quality in here, I think, was really good actually, and uh, you get some good details, you get some great HDR, and it's uh, it's quite a quite a really good version of Star Wars. It's one of the best in the uh, the original Star Wars on 4K. Next one is one I just watched and I thought, well, why not? And I had an excellent time with this movie and it is Sausage Party. Now, the funny thing is about Sausage Party is, obviously, you know, it's an extremely um, graphic uh, sort. It's not a kid's film. And uh, the, the person that really surprised me in here, and I didn't know who it was in the whole of the movie. I think it's, uh, if I can find the picture, I think it's this donut here. And he comes across like a sort of a Woody Allen type character. In fact, the person doing the voice is doing a kind of Woody Allen impersonation. And he's got the whole neur neurosis that goes along with Woody Allen. And actually, it's Edward Norton. Now, I'm not a big fan of Edward Norton. I think his movies are okay. Sometimes I think he's not the best of actors. And I think maybe he's miscast in quite a few of his uh, films. Then I don't really have much of his movies at all, if any. But he was a standout for me. It's just his whole... Um, his whole uh, impersonation of Woody Allen was just unbe I couldn't believe I was um, he, di he did that, I don't know why he did that but anyway the movie is so funny I find and uh, I will be upgrading this to 4k if I see it for cheap and I've seen it for cheap before, uh, I think it would really benefit with uh, HDR the film itself is just uh, an out and out sort of trying to get the most uh, sort of schoolboy humour in it but Never mind, it is what it is, and uh, I like it for what it is. So, Sausage Party, good laugh. And a great little slip here, slip here which just, you know, you don't, you don't get many of them at all. We all know what that means. So, next up, we watched The Empire Strikes Back. Now, we've done really well with our Star Wars uh, movies this month, and we are going to definitely go ahead with this and get this, hopefully, the last ones watched 
in uh, this month so I can get it I'm gonna ranking at the end of the month hopefully so the Empire Strikes Back uh, widely regarded as the best uh, Star Wars movie uh, is it my favorite that remains to be seen the 4k on here I think is good I don't think it's as good as Star Wars personally and um, it still benefits highly from the extra resolution in the HDR the sound effects and everything was great I don't think this movie was tinkered around as much as uh, Star Wars was and probably Return the Jedi has got more of a tinkering as well. I think this is more or less left the way it should have been. And uh, yes, so thoughts, as I said, will be on that video. But as 4Ks go, it's a decent 4K. I think that the actual, the the, the first three movies, you get confused, don't you? Uh, they do look quite good, and I think they benefit the most from the 4K upgrade. Okay, so. This is going to be, this next part is going to be my top three recommendations that I watched this month. And I do urge anybody who's a fan of just of cinema in general to maybe check these films out. So at number three is The Old Dark House. We watched this the other night and I've got to admit I've had such a good time with this movie. Uh, usually I would watch all of these on the TV and there would always be, this would have been on the TV a thousand times but I hadn't actually bumped into this movie at all. And, which is quite strange because I had no recollection of it whatsoever. And believe you me, if I had have seen this back in the day, I would, rem would have remembered some parts of this. The basic premise is very simple, that uh, a group of travelers uh, are get caught in, in Wales and they are sort of this floods happening and the, and the roads being sort of washed away. So they hold up in this old dark house. And they go in and they're greeted by the butler it was played by Boris Karloff, who's uh, just come fresh off um, Frankenstein. There is an actual thing at the start of the movie that says that this, to avoid confusion, which it's strange, but this was, you can tell this was filmed at the time. To avoid confusion, the monster in Frankenstein and Boris Karloff on this film, the, uh, the butler, are the same people to avoid confusion and to avoid people arguing about it, which is a bit, I've never seen something like that before. Um, so the movie itself, it's, uh, it's a, a really nice print. Uh, it takes place in this, like I say, old dark house and they go in these, this, this uh, two bunch of groups of travelers. This first couple, or first group, and then the second group turn up as well. They're in this house and this, uh, the fella who kind of owns this is, is in this uh, family called the, the Femmes. And they are a, a strange bunch, they are odd and the whole the whole house is odd and everything about it is odd uh, the lady here is actually the old woman in titanic and it's amazing to see her as a young person she must be in her 20s in this movie there's charles lawton there and he is doing his a really good yorkshire accent as well you don't really see people with yorkshire accents in movies from that from that uh, 1930s 1932 i find that you don't anyway so this, uh, the whole sort of twist and turns about this, uh, this, this film is that um, there's people locked in rooms and you can't open certain doors and they've got uh, members of the family are locked away and they can't be seen and seen and they get out. And uh, Boris Karloff plays this uh, this mute butler who is um, how I can I say he's, he's he's very uh, volatile. He gets drunk and then he just starts going crazy and uh, it's just a descent into sort of this comedic nightmare that this uh, this this whole travelers are uh, experiencing it's really really good it's it's, de it's deadly different it's very different to anything i've seen in universal horror uh, it, it it looks as if the same sets is for, used from frankenstein movies uh, sort of the scenes and all that it's actually directed by james whale who did frankenstein and yes so i can highly recommend it if you can find a slip as well a slip is absolutely amazing it's one of the fa most favorite artwork on a slip that i've seen the people in here are just unreal now this this guy here in the movie i know he's got makeup on and all that and he's uh in real life it was talking and i was watching some of the behind the scenes things in here which are actually absolutely brilliant on the special features so this guy here is in the movie his real age is although he's not meant to be this age his real age is 53 now I'm 53. I would love to think I look a little bit younger than this guy. Wow. Okay, so at number two is the Arrow release of a movie called Climax. Now, 
A lot of people talked very highly about this and it was on my list to watch when I saw it in the sale. I thought, right, I'm gonna pounce, I'm gonna have that one. And I put it on and I didn't know what to expect. I did know that it was a, a group of people had their drinks spiked and they were, they were at a sort of disco, that's what I heard. And what it kind of is, and it's meant to be a true story or based on a true story, so whatever is uh, real, I don't actually know. I would imagine there's certain parts of it to be real. Um, it looks as if then it's kind of like a, like a, I would say like a sports centre um, and maybe they have like a, a sports centre slash dance studio thing and uh, it's these people are in there and I'm sure they're just doing just going in and get dancing instructions or dancing sort of lessons and or just dancing off and just exercising or dancing whatever and then yes they have a, some uh, punch and some uh, drinks and whatever and it is spiked uh, with whatever and uh, they drink it, all of them drink it, and uh, to varying extents, and some people don't drink it, and then it starts accusations off, and these people are like not experienced things in the real world, they are just going absolutely crazy, really. But the first, I would say the first half of it, maybe even the first 50 minutes of it, is just them dancing on the dance floor, and uh, it's brilliant. And the, one of the opening songs is a song called uh, Supernature by Cerrone, which is one of my favourite songs from 1978. And it's uh, I've been listening to it in the car, actually, on the loop. And the way they're dancing to this music, I must be treble jointed, these people. I've never seen anybody fling themselves around so so wildly. And, of course, so that's great. And they, they dance, like, say, for about 50 minutes, and you see the, the various skills they've got. And then they start drinking the drink, and then the sort of paranoia and the um, madness creeps in and then certain things happen there's a lot of it i thought this was going to be extremely violent but it's not as violent as it as i thought uh it's just got some really sort of odd scenes in it and there's some yeah there is some graphic nature and i'm not going to say it's not as neat that's that's what happens but uh thoroughly thoroughly recommended i must admit i had a great time with this and so um there's only one film that topped it for me in this month but highly recommended climax it's just uh wow what a film but the dancing in it is just something i could probably watch the whole film of dancing and i never thought i would ever say that so my number one recommendation and i watched it twice this month actually i watched it once by myself and once with my wife who begrudgingly watched it with us and didn't like the way it was at the start because it is hyper violent um which is not really a fan of but i did twist her arm and watching it and she sort of relented and she at the end of it she did admit that this was a great film so my recommendation for the month is arrows why don't you just die so i put this on i thought this this should be a good film because it's i've never heard anything about it really i know it's a russian film and i think it's the fella's debut film believe it or not now if that's the case i would look forward to i know it's got some short films on here which i do want to check out um i do think that this if this but this bloke is going to make more films like this. He is just so want a look to watch. Uh, also, as well, when I was watching it, I was saying my son actually was watching, coming through, and I says, "Have you seen this movie? I heard about you." He says, "No," and I says, "You want to watch it? Take it off the shelves and watch it, and put it back in the right slot." And uh, I says, "I didn't even look at the back," and I says, "You know, it looks a bit like reminds of like Tarantino, Edgar Wright, and uh, Sam Raimi, and who it's it says on here." Shades of early Tarantino, Edgar Wright and Sam Raimi abound in this violent, stylish and riotously entertaining slice of family life. I couldn't have put it better myself and honestly I didn't look at that and I just thought, what? But it's true. Um, the editing here is spectacular. The story is so amazing and um, the violence in it, just the way that it goes is just it's brilliant. But I found, because my wife has seen, oh I can't watch this, it's too violent and I says, well, it's, it's, to me, it's a bit over the top. It's a bit like Tom and Jerry. It's a bit like cartoon violence in, in some parts. Don't get us wrong, it's brutal in other parts. Um, the things that get done with um, various little things, they've got your toes curling, um, some of the things they do to each other. But the plot in it is not just simply... Um, the, the short story is this, this fellow goes into this house to kill that man who is the, hus who is this, the father of this this girl who he's dating and she says that he's been interfering with her when he was young young so he wants she wants him to go and kill him there's the mother there that's the short story but there is a lot more to it than that uh, the twists and turns in this movie are, are absolutely brilliant and this guy here he's he's a great uh well he's obviously an actor from russia I've never seen him before 
where he's one of them people you think you would be amazing and like a Bond villain and uh, he's just got this presence which I just I mean the wall were great but this fella's present presence in this movie was was absolutely spellbinding so I can't recommend this highly enough I did think funny enough I did think for some reason when you when you look at a film you think I bet this is good uh, and it was a blind buy and you just think right I'll go and just see see what it is here it's got a reversible art which yeah I don't think it's I think the original art there is better for me um, well the art that's presented on the original cover um, so yes so that's my recommendation for the month um, why don't you just die I think it's a 2019 film oh, it's very uh, very recent so thanks for watching you take care and I will see you on the next video cheers